So now that we have uh, successfully performed the posting profile setup, let's go and uh, create a sales order and see how it goes. So go into the account receivable or in the sales and marketing module, all sales order, click on the new button, create a sales order. Again, every single um, fields here, the days and everything, the simulate delivery dates, delivery date control, all of that we will cover in a separate video. We will have those, those are all differ, uh, deserve a separate session to cover. For now, let's just focus on the basic sales order process. Again, for a sales order, we need a customer account. We only have one customer account, so we use that. And uh, the customer delivery address that we have configured within the customer account comes here. You can also add a new delivery address or, you know, change to a new delivery address if the customer is having multiple delivery address. The contact information related with the customer, if they have any, then you can uh, click on it and choose the contact person. Uh, this is the serial number of the sales order. This is the invoice account. We have already discussed about the customer account, invoice account. When you have multiple companies involved, you can have a different invoice account. So in such cases, there will be a different invoice account tagged here. The currency of the customer is INR. The site and warehouses are defaulted from the customer record. If you remember, we have defaulted the, the, the site and warehouse within the customer. So they automatically populate here. Uh, and the most important thing here is the order type should not be journal. The order type should be of the sales order. So uh, by default, it is uh, journal because um, this is actually coming from the setup. Uh, we will go and change this setup to something else so that it doesn't always defaults to journal. So when your sales order order type is of uh, type journal, then it means that the sales order is only draft. I will not be able to post any transactions to a journal type sales order that that particular um, sales order which is of type journal will also not be considered in any kind of master planning related things and also you will not be able to consume any stock or pack any packing slip or post any financial postings while your sales order is of type journal but why is it by default journal is because if you go to, I think, account receivable parameter, uh, you will find the field that is defaulting to journal, which is this one, sales or defaults. Let me change it to sales order. So now let's go again and create a sales order. This time it should not be journal. Let's pick the customer that one and now the order type is sales order there are more order types like subscription subscription is uh, these days you know the business models are changing the people instead of even doing a one-off sales they're also kind of uh, doing a product as a service business model uh, in our business model that is ADC motor company is a company that sells car right it's also possible for us to maybe uh, lease a car. In such cases, you may use the sales order of type subscription and you can repeatedly invoice the customer for leasing a car in a form of a sales order in a loop. The sales order will never close. It will let you to invoice a fixed amount, which is uh, maybe a sales order having a service item with a fixed amount and you're repeatedly invoicing a sales order. In such cases, you can use a subscription type of sales order to uh, perform this scenario so other other types are written order it is for uh, uh, returning back the that is a customer return scenario and the item requirement it is a sales order that is getting created from the projects and accounting module but anyway in this case uh, we are only going to explore the sales order type order type so once you have all of that just go and create a sales order sales order is having a line view and a header view in a line view is where we will add the item that we are going to sell to the customer and in the header view you will see like hundreds of fields and 90 percentage of the fields you see here are all the fields that got inherited from the customer master 
So all the fields will look more familiar because we've already seen all of this field within your customer master. They are just inheriting from there. Anyway, we will see most important fields whenever we reach a specific topic. At this moment, we will be only reviewing the posting process. So I'm going to the line section and adding a item that I'm going to deliver. Uh, so I think this is the first item is in stock so let me try to wait for the item uh, that one is in stock so you should also make sure the item is in stock unlike for the purchase process where you are boosting the inventory in this you're detecting from inventory so you definitely need an inventory stock before you post your delivery so in this case yeah there is only one quantity that i'm going to post and of course we have no trade agreement set up for the item so the item is not populating any price so let me try to populate a price for that particular item which is uh 230 dollars so the unit price is 230 and the net amount will be 230 times of the quantity if the quantity is two then it doubles up so in this case quantity is one so the unit price and net amount are same so once you do this then the next step is going to be the confirmation of the sales order which is again an optional process but good to confirm so let me go and confirm the sales order so during confirmation there are two kinds of confirmation we will explore the difference between them in a separate video but to give you a heads up if i click on this confirmation then you will get a screen and where you can validate the process and you can even choose whether to print a confirmation journal to a, a printer and you can also do some validation before you confirm it whereas uh, if i use the other confirmation process you will not be shown with any intermediate screen the system will confirm the sales order right away so let me use a confirm now button so the confirmation happens right away so the confirmation is now done so once the confirmation is done the next step is in the next tab which is generating a picking list picking list is in some cases you know a sales order will have hundreds of parts that needs to be picked so you might need to create a list of parts that needs to be picked along with their location and the inventory information and provide it to a warehouse worker who is responsible for picking those items so he can use a hard copy report of your picking list and go to the specific location pick the product and also mark a tick in the against a checkbox that will be available in the uh, picking list uh, report he can check all the items that are picked so he understands the progress so we can just quickly even print a picking list report or just go and uh, post a picking list so that means that a picking list is issued to the warehouse worker so now since that now the picking list is issued so now the warehouse worker will go to the relevant area in the system and performs the picking physically out of the inventory so to remove them or register them physically in the inventory we use the picking list registration this is normally done once the item is picked so in this case i'm going to mark my picking process by registering those quantity in the system so now my picking process is completed and physically they have been picked from the inventory so after this the process is going to be posting your delivery that is posting your packing slip so click on the post packing slip button and you will get this and here you can review the information and you can go ahead and post your packing slip more details about these screens and some properties within the screen we will cover them one by one but this is just a high level overview so now that the packing slip is posted there will be both the physical impact and the financial impact meaning physically the inventory is removed out of the warehouse and also financially the inventory account or the cogs account got posted so to view them you go to the packing slip and you see this is the entry and the vouchers and you will see that there are two lines of transaction where the cox account got debited and the inventory account got credited as we expect and if you remember this is the 
account that we have tagged in the inventory posting and this is the account that we tagged again in the inventory posting as well um this is the the total cost price of the the item and this is again the the cost price the inventory cost of that particular item is minus so this uh, is the running average cost of this item at this particular time while posting the packing slip so now it is done and uh, we can now go ahead and uh, uh, invoice this particular uh, sales order click on the invoice button and say okay and this particular sales order will now be invoiced um before invoicing i wanted to show you something but yeah so uh, before invoicing so let let me very quickly create another sales order because i also wanted to show you a difference between before invoicing and after invoicing so let's just create one more quick sales order with the same item so that one that one okay so let's just put a price here and let's go one by one again guys the registration process is not mandatory it all depends on your item model group setup uh, if you're in the item model group if uh, this particular is mandatory then it becomes mandatory uh, in my case I'm not sure whether it's mandatory or optional but however I am just trying to do the uh, picking list posting and registration to be at the safer side So once you do all this and then post the packing slip, now the, the ledger accounts are posted because the packing slip is posted. And one more thing I wanted to show you is the inventory transaction of the packing slip posting, which actually gets detected, meaning it gets detected. Uh, the issue status and once you invoice it this will get sold at this moment is only delivered so it gets detected and uh, there's one more thing is like in the transaction detail if you go here you will also see your um, ledger account there meaning this one these are the two ledger impact during your physical posting we call it as physical posting and we call the invoicing as financial posting so now we have done with your physical posting so only these two rows are filled once you have finished your financial posting even these two rows will be filled so uh, you will also see the physical cost is minus 167 which is the cost price of the item there is no cost amount here no financial date or voucher all this will get filled upon invoicing the sales order so after invoicing, we will see what happens and how this, this cost get transfers here. So, so this is something which I missed to show you earlier. But anyways, now we'll go and invoice this particular sales order. So once the sales order invoiced, the packing slip uh, accounts, that is the posting that happened earlier, all gets reversed. <clears throat> it's invoiced and then if you go and check the invoice journal voucher you will see so many posted lines <clears throat> so the customer balance got posted from the customer posting profile this particular customer balance is nothing but the account that we have tagged in the customer posting profile and this actually gets debited because it's an asset account it's increased and uh, your uh, 
this account that is your revenue account that we have tagged in the inventory posting profile it's getting credited these two are for the sales amount and again all of the other things are for the cost amount meaning your um, uh, the permanent cox account that you might need to debit so that's getting debited and the temporary account which got post debited earlier gets credit and um, uh, the the permanent uh, invoice account that is sorry the inventory account the asset account is getting credited and the earlier temporary inventory account actually got uh, debited as well so uh, the the postings that happened in the pa packing slip are reversed and the new permanent posting for the inventory which is this for the cox which is this for the revenue which is this for the customer balance which is this all got posted and the accounting equation is absolutely balanced so if you now go to the inventory transactions and check the inventory transactions sold instead of detected and if you check the transaction details you will see that the cost price is updated in the finance section the invoice the financial voucher financial date and also the <clears throat> the final account is also mapped here so this is how the sales order flow goes and this is the financial impact while posting various journals within a sales order hope it is clear and uh, uh, we will continue further with the sales order in the next video